So we're going to revisit the bouncing ball, but this time we're going to learn how to do parenting. Okay. So parent basically is um, it's a helper in animation so that you can accomplish multiple transform tools of transform animation without overriding your animation. Because the thing is, when you're animating just this ball and you're animating the z-axis going up and down, okay, and so it's doing its thing and then you wanted to change the animation so that uh, it'll go higher in certain parts but still doing its cycle or another function then you can't because it will override it so now uh, if we parent it's 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 like linking the ball into an object and when you animate that object the ball is also will be animated so let's explain the whole thing right but first things first is that I'm not going to need the pivot point of this ball to the bottom anymore okay because we did that so that when we hit the ground it can squash on the point of impact right so what I'll do is that simply put this pivot point back to its center so which is really simple in object mode I go object set origin and then I'm just gonna go origin to geometry which is the center of the object and it's back to where it's at okay so that's the first thing I did I set the origin to the geometry of the object while in object mode okay so let's talk about parents all right so parenting and the parent-child relationship so you're gonna need an object for this and we call those object null or um, empty um, yeah on other programs it's called null these are objects that don't render so they're going to be all I don't know if you've seen animation where they're animating a character and then they have all, have all this controllers around the character like circles and whatnot they're the uh, the animators grab those instead and it moves the character okay so they're like uh, handles and controllers <coughs> okay so I'm gonna get an empty and we're gonna get a circle okay all right so the circle let's see where it's at uh, where's my empty right there at the bottom okay where the 3d cursor was so I probably should have moved the 3d cursor position but it kind of created there at the bottom so let's take a look here all right so this empty we want to make sure I'm gonna go to the front viewport here that uh, this is the uh, uh, parent all right so I'm gonna scale this a little bit a little bigger than the circle okay I'm gonna rotate it also rx90 okay let me turn on screencast let me click on do so R rotation X will be the axis and then 9 0 it goes kinda like that okay then now I can position this at the bottom of the ball as you can imagine now the the uh, position of that you need to make sure it's at the bottom of the ball there's ways to snap it but we can just kinda do that and it's around alright so the point of this is that we are going to animate the helper instead so this empty right here will be the poke ball parent okay partent that's terrible <laughs> parent right there and then the sphere the pokeball this is the pokeball child okay so the ball is the child this one is the parent okay so how do we make this the parent of uh, the ball all right well there's there's many ways to do it okay you can drag it here and uh, parent it if you put it in the same kind of collection you can also do uh, uh, shift selecting it and then uh, parenting it as an object okay uh, and then wherever you move that there's kind of many ways to do it right this I want I just kind of jumped the gun there and did that so that you could see right here when it's properly parented the child is indexed below the parent you see it right there okay so I'm gonna click undo okay kind of release them both okay so in order to parent your object 
you have to select the child first and then shift click the parent last remember that you always select the parent last okay so let me do it again select the child shift click the parent okay and after that shift and P as in Popeye okay Uh, control P, sorry, not shift P. <laughs> control P, okay? Control P and then set the parent to simply click object, okay? Uh, there's options here without inverse and keep transform, which we'll use once we have a rig, but for now, just simply set parent to object. Again, let me repeat, shift click the parent last, okay? So after doing control P, the child now is at the bottom of the parent. So. If I click and select the parent and move the parent, the child follows, okay? If I select the child, it has independence, okay? So that's basically the setup here. Wherever I move the parent, the child will follow, but when you just move the child, you can animate it independent of the parent, which gives you a little bit of freedom now, right? So by looking at this, we can now animate the, uh, the parent and then the ball, the child will simply follow. So if I click this here and then position it down here, like so, if I go to the front, okay, the ball follows and if I s squash the parent, the ball gets squashed, all right? So you're wondering, uh, what's the big deal, right? What is the big deal with this? Because we, we could do that from the previous one. And you are correct because we were able to do that without any problem. But, however, what if we want to introduce rotation to the ball? Okay, so let me just save this real quick. We'll go back to it, right? So this one is the uh, Pokeball parent lesson, right? Let me just save that real quick. And let's reopen the one with the bounds. Okay, so remember, no big deal, right? Because we could do it here. However, what if we want to rotate the ball? So while it's spinning, while it's bouncing, it's rotating. Yeah, this is what happens. Where's the pivot point of this? At the bottom, right? So if we want to rotate this, if I'm on, let's say, on the side right here, watch this. Look where it's rotating. It's rotating at the rotational point, the pivot point. We can't make this thing rotate at the center because we move the pivot point at the bottom so we can do squashing properly. So we're out of luck, okay? We can't rotate the ball properly. Now, going back to our previous one, okay, which is this one right here, since we are not responsible for the squashing and the up and down, this ball now can freely rotate. Oh, I got to move it to the center, by the way, okay, to its pivot point. So let me fix that real quick. So I'm going to go to the ball. So, yeah, I, I was only looking at the front. So object set origin didn't do it. So. Let's take a look here. I'm going to select the uh, ball, go to edit mode. Okay. And then I'm going to select this ring right here. So I'm going to uh, alt and click this line. It selects this ring all the way around. Okay. Oh, not actually. Uh, let me add this one also. All right, select it kind of like that ring all the way around, okay? And then I can set uh, my uh, pivot point. So I'm going to snap the cursor to selected. Okay. But it's not quite in there. Just on the selected. Uh, let's see how we can... Uh, cursor to active. What did it do? It kind of push everything in. Oh, yeah, because I'm in edit mode. Okay. So now uh, 
let's change the to the center of the world there okay so let me just change the cursor first so let's change the cursor uh, snap sorry snap cursor to world origin which is the center of the ball okay so now it's at the center of the ball so all I did is object snap cursor to world origin okay now with the ball selected object set origin to 3d cursor all right so now the ball cursor is at the center if I go to the side and then do my rotation uh, it's a little still wobbly I think I know why because the uh, the ball is uh, it's not as its center so let me let me move this down a little bit okay so right there it's aligned to that one okay let me check the front all right so now I'm gonna go object set origin origin to 3d cursor okay so now when we go number three here let's do our rotation oops there we go so now it's dead center to the ball okay so we now have two options here we can animate using this going up and down and then the ball uh, rotating on its own okay so let's do the previous animation uh, using the uh, parent as our animation right so um, let's take a look so the bottom right here it's uh, let's just make this to uh, to minus one okay and uh, just so that it's 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 a whole number right so we know that the bottom is minus one and uh, the uh, ball can go up I think what did we use last time seven I think okay so I'm animating now the uh, helper okay so on frame one let me go to the front here uh, I can just move the uh, well actually it's not on its uh, because we did change the location of this one so uh, because of the people at point got changed so let me unparent this real quick oh, sorry. alt P to clear the parent let me turn on screencast okay alt P clear parent okay the problem with that is the pivot point is up there but let me check it's at the center okay so I'm gonna go back here and then just simply go up on that one and then I think it's on seven I think the last time we checked it but it's this one is slightly above so I'm gonna move it up GZ right there okay so now uh, let's go to eight okay so select the ball shift click this one control P object and we're now animating this all right so it's on seven and then minus one right so keyframe it on seven I mean Z axis on one and then on frame 25 the same thing so if you think this is way too fast with the animation this is the same lesson as the previous one so simply watch that uh, in order to kind of understand all this uh, positioning all right so when is the ball on the ground that was frame 10 right and frame 16 so on frame 10 this is on the ground and that's minus one I think minus one all right minus one right there on Z right click insert single keyframe then 16 uh, minus 1 
All right, so now let's watch it. There it is. It kind of looked like what it's supposed to do already. Okay, so let's fix the uh, bounce. So selecting the, uh, again, we haven't animated the ball. We're just animating the parent. So I'm going to go to the graph editor. Okay, and remember this too, we got to change them from V to vector. Vector gives us a flat one right here and then independent handles. So if we go like so on those, pressing G to move it. So this will give us the correct bounds. All right. So now let's add the uh, squashing. Again, we're just animating the parent. So the squashing starts on frame 10. But let's reverse this, okay? Uh, because the other one we animated it uh, where one uh, XYZ is set to one, so on and so forth, right? So let's um, let's animate this. Uh, oh, I forgot to uh, change the uh, I forgot to change the value. Uh, um, I forgot to apply the scale on this one. So let's not apply the scale. I'm just going to go to frame ten here and then let's do our animation. Let's not reverse it. So uh, here, all X Y Z. I'm going to press I scale, okay, and then on sixteen, press I scale and then here on 13 we squash it this much so that's 0.5 I'm gonna go like 1 okay and then on X let's expand it to 2 so that should give us our kind of fake volume okay and then I'm just gonna press I here and then animate the scale. So now let's take a look. Exactly the same as before. It's squashing up and down, but we're only animating the parent. So now since the ball hasn't been animated at all, we can now start introducing a rotation animation. Can we add a parent to the ball that is parented to the parent as well? So two kind of parent to do the rotation. Yes, we can, but we don't need to. Okay, so I'm going to hit number three right here. So let's rotate the ball. Okay, so right here, the rotation for it will be uh, X. Okay, that's the X axis. So when the ball is on top right here, we're just going to animate the rotation X, wherever it's at, at 90. So I'm going to insert single keyframe, animate it right there. Okay. And now when it's uh, animating, uh, let's see, on 13 right here, right? So let's animate the ball to kind of rotate kind of forward and then just kind of do a, an invert. So 270, right click, insert single keyframe. So just kind of look. There you go. So it's bouncing, rotating. And then on its way up to 25. Okay. We go 450. Should be the uh, correct number right there. So let's take a look. There you go. So now we're able to add rotation animation at the center of the ball. All right. Okay. And we're going to stop the demo here.